change is everywhere. Inventions, innovations, gadgets, the internet. Science and technology is redefining the way we live. Rappler brings you the frontline news on this brave new world. I am Matthew Ang for our top story. It's a week of birthdays. The Hubble telescope turns 25 while YouTube turns 10. Google Wireless is about to make network providers a little less relevant. And spectacular footage of ash and flames as a volcano erupts in Chile. Hubble is the first telescope to revolutionize modern astronomy and give us a glimpse of distant galaxies. It marks its 25th year in space this week. Hubble began its orbit around the Earth in April 1990, snapping incredible pictures of the nearby galaxies. The telescope is the fruit of a collaboration between space agency NASA and the European Space Agency. On the eve of Hubble's silver anniversary, NASA released a photo that best captures the telescope's main job for the past quarter century, revealing to us the magnificence of the universe. It captured an image of 3,000 stars in a cluster called Westerland 2, part of the constellation Carina. The best picture we have of Pluto is a blurry, pixelated blob. But that's about to change when a NASA spacecraft makes its first ever flyby on a dwarf planet. The space agency's unmanned New Horizons spacecraft will pass by Pluto on July 14 and will send back unprecedented high-resolution images. Pluto was long considered the ninth planet in the solar system and the farthest from the sun. It was reclassified as a dwarf planet in 2006. Rocky on the inside and icy on the outside, Pluto has five moons and resides on the Kuiper Belt, a relic of the era of planetary formation. New Horizons, about the size of a baby grand piano, is the fastest moving spacecraft ever launched. It is powered by plutonium since the sunlight is so weak at that distance. We are now at the Manila Observatory in Ateneo de Manila, which celebrates its 150th anniversary. It's the Philippines' first observatory, first founded in 1865 to predict the passing of typhoons to prevent wide-scale damage. It ventured into time service in 1885, seismology in 1887, and astronomy in 1889. I'm working on space weather, so it's uh, the weather above the, the weather that we know. Well, space weather is really the weather experienced by satellites. So if you have satellites and you have storms from the sun, then it will hit the Earth. Okay. And the magnetic field of the Earth shields us from that. The American government renamed the Manila Observatory and made it the official weather bureau in 1901. For the last 50 years, it pursued numerous studies and won many awards. And it was featured in a 1940 National Geographic article on world-famous observatories. Uh, the Manila Observatory is a Jesuit scientific institution. So uh, we are doing currently doing research in air quality. We're also doing research in seismology as well as in climate. In 2010, when she was 26 years old, Filipino astrophysicist Rainer Reyes led the research team to prove Albert Einstein's theory of relativity. Einstein's theories have been verified many times, but it took Reyes and her Princeton University collaborators to verify his theory of general relativity beyond the confines of our solar system. Led by Reyes, the research team showed how galaxies up to 3.5 billion light years away are clustered together in exactly the way general relativity predicts. They came up with a new astronomical measurement, which indicates how galaxies are pulled together by gravity, just as Einstein theorized. Her findings also support the existence of dark energy, a force greater than gravity once merely imagined by scientists. Reina is now working on a different kind of astronomical data, one that saves lives. She's now a data scientist who works on data mapping for disaster risk management. Disaster preparedness um, project from the point of view of pre-positioning and allocation of relief goods in preparation for disaster and responding after disaster. So thinking of uh, humanitarian relief, so supply chain. That's the volcano in Chile that erupted twice in the space of hours with tremendous force on April 22 and 23, blasting huge clouds of ash into the air. The Calabuco volcano had been inactive for 54 years. A state of emergency was declared after the first eruption and air traffic was disrupted. Chilean TV aired spectacular footage of ash and flames belching from the mouth of the volcano. 
The first eruption spewed a giant mushroom of ash, 10 kilometers or 6 miles into the sky. Ash is expected to reach neighboring Argentina. Facebook newsfeed is about to get a bit more interesting if its latest changes roll out successfully. The updates announced last Tuesday will bring more content that interests users more. So what can you expect? Facebook says it will begin prioritizing content posted directly by the friends you care about, like photos, videos, status updates, or links. Downside, those who manage public pages will have difficulty putting their content out there. Google is about to unveil its wireless service. Tech site Wired says this could make your wireless carrier a lot less relevant. In its blog, Google introduces its wireless phone service, Project Fi. Connection is a human right. It's the thing that enables you to do all the great things that you want to do in your life. It promises to help users get the highest quality connection from wherever. Whether it be Wi-Fi or LTE, Project Fi automatically connects users to more than a million free open Wi-Fi hotspots Google has verified fast and reliable. For $20 a month, users get all the basics like voice calls, text messaging, Wi-Fi tethering, and international coverage in more than 12 countries. Project Fi will be available on the Nexus 6. You can give Project Fi a try if you live in the US and are in any of the locations where the coverage is available. All right, so here we are in front of the uh, elephants. This clip was uploaded 10 years ago on April 23, 2005. It's the first ever clip on YouTube and the guy you see in the video is YouTube co-founder Jawed Karim. Fast forward a decade later, YouTube has more than 1 billion users with localized services in 75 countries and 61 languages. Some 300 hours of video are uploaded to YouTube every minute. Every day, people watch hundreds of millions of hours of video and generate billions of views. Analyst Dan Rayburn says, even if YouTube is immensely popular around the world, the vast amount of its content, quote, cannot be monetized. YouTube's videos are mainly user-generated content and is often embedded in other sites. He adds, even today, Google will not say if YouTube is profitable, but 90% of analysts say it is not. Google bought YouTube in 2006 for about 1.6 billion in stock. YouTube brought in some 4.7 billion in revenue in 2014, but also has high costs. Rayburn says Google appears to be happy to leave YouTube as it is, consistent with the philosophy of the firm to, quote, keep everything free and open. Internet dating site for infidelity, Ashley Madison, CEO Noel Biderman says, the company's time has come. He says, to illustrate his point, the spouse of someone publicly unfaithful just announced her presidency. In an interview with Mashable about a trillion dollar infidelity business, Biderman points to Hillary Clinton who just announced she's running for the White House. He says, think about it, who announced her presidency last week? She could be the first president who is the current spouse of someone who is very publicly unfaithful. Biderman adds, we are going to be economics plus emotions. You will have more massive swings because of emotions. Ashley Madison's parent company says it intends to raise up to $200 million in an IPO in London later this year. Five years ago, the global financial system was rocked by the flash crash. 15 minutes of chaos that shook the world's biggest markets. Investors ask, how can such a vital part of the economy be brought to its knees? On Tuesday, United States prosecutors said much of the blame for the event could be pinned on a single person, 36-year-old trader Navinder Singh Sarau, who had been boldly manipulating markets from a suburban house outside London. The Dow Jones Industrial Average dropped more than 600 points in minutes on the afternoon of May 6, 2010, then recovered almost immediately. According to the criminal complaint, Sarau withdrew thousands of orders worth of tens of millions of dollars each to push down the price of futures contracts tied to the value of the Standard & Poor's 500 stock index. The practice is known as spoofing. Once the price fell, Sarah would buy the contract and reap the profits. <laughs> Xiaomi unveils the Mi 4i in India. The Mi 4i is being called the best-looking Xiaomi phone to date with a fully polycarbonate body, but the beauty of the gadget is in a price tag about $205 or around 8,800 pesos. It sports a 13 megapixel rear camera and a 5 megapixel front camera with a beautify feature that removes blemishes from your selfies. 
It also comes with a sunlight display that makes your photos look good under all types of light. It's been tested for corner drops, water resistance, abrasion resistance, pressure, flat drop, vibrations, tumbles, thermal shot, and UV exposure. It features a faster processor than its pressure predecessor, the Mi 4, and a battery that's coat designed to give one and a half days of real world usage. And before we go, here's a photo of black marble earth from NASA, posted on Instagram for Earth Day. NASA notes the night side of our planet twinkles with light, and the first thing to stand out is the cities. Scientist Chris Eldridge says, nothing tells us more about the spread of humans across the earth than city lights. And that's SciTech for you, a fun rundown of the nerdiest, smartest, science and technology events and breakthroughs on the planet. This is Matthew Ang, I'll see you in two weeks.